But anyways, we're going to be replacing the charge port here. So to do that, you're going to need um, either um, a solder gun or the easiest way is with one of these hot air station things. So I'm, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Let's see here. So I'm going to set it on my desk. Usually I have to hang the board off my desk. I'll use the weight of the laptop to keep it from falling over. Let me see if I can show you what I'm going to be doing. Okay, So I have a thing that, that um, has some claws that I usually use um, with rubber to kind of prevent it from being damaged. But uh, we'll do it on my table because everyone has a table and this, is a, this way will work as well. Okay, so let me see if I can show you. I don't know how I'll show this. Let's see here. Maybe like that. Okay, that works. So you can kind of, no. Eh, let me zoom out some more. Okay, so you can kind of see that. Um, I will have to use a smaller thing here. So let's see, that should be about good size. Usually I like to use a smaller one, um, but you can use like a larger one to just make sure all the heat goes around. Um, and then you would tighten this thing on, okay? Okay, so now we're gonna use hot air to do this, all right? So usually I use the air on low speed, but then high heat or low air. And I basically use um, this to heat up the area around it and then after that um, I use some small pliers as well okay so let's see here but to put the new one in I'll use a soldering iron so you'll see that as well um, let me see if I can do a better zoom in of just that okay my lights are gonna start flickering now because Let's see, how can I show this? Is it that way, this way? Okay. Hopefully you can see, okay. There you go. Uh, what's that wire? Is that this? The hose from, okay, so that's the hose from this thing. But anyways, um, you heat it up. Oh, my hand's gonna be in the way. But you just heat this up. This uh, kept on tape on top is going to melt, but um, you can't really help that. So you just heat this up. You can turn the air higher if you want. And usually I try and heat the surrounding area a little bit so it doesn't like heat up just everything or just melt the one spot. So just keep heating this. When it's getting close to being hot enough, you can kind of put some upward pressure on the bottom and you'll know, see it's coming out now. And then you can grab the charge port and take it out. All right, so it comes out pretty easily, just like that. Then you take the replacement one. Okay, usually the solder will kind of melt and be in the way. So it's kind of gonna be a pain, so you gotta like heat this up. Usually I won't do it this way because um, uh, doing with this, it's not as good. So what I'll do is I'll use the air and turn it kind of high and then try and blow the solder out. For this one I would use a smaller one, but we can just try and drop it in. So let's see if that'll work. Now it's really warm. You can put the thing there. Try and heat it up. Use the pliers to push it back down. Oops. You don't want to touch this with your bare hands, of course. So just heat it up, try and melt the solder back. OK, 
Okay, so the solder melted, and there we go. Feels like it dropped in place. So now that it dropped in place, you can stop heating it. Turn this off. The thing keeps air flowing through it to keep it from overheating. I'll turn the air higher just to pull it down. All right, so now we got the part replaced already. It's, all right. it's still hot actually. <laughs> So be careful, let it cool down. Okay, so that's how you would do that. It cools down somewhat quickly, but it takes it does still take a while. So you want to wait, give it about 5-10 minutes. Um, I will um, add some solder to here because the old one will actually pull some of the solder away so I don't know if you want to see or if you can so this one they actually looks like they let's see if I can show they broke the tip off of the it's kind of there we go so they broke the tip of the charger off inside it looks like um, but yeah some of the solder gets stuck on these pins and so I usually have to add new solder um, the hot air is not really good for adding new solder so what I do is I use a solder iron for this okay so let me grab a soldering iron and the soldering iron you'll have like this sponge thing so you have to add some water to that all right this allows you to clean off it, the bad solder Okay, so now we got the, let's see if I can show everything at once, I don't know, where's that, okay, okay, I don't know if I can show everything at once, there we go, alright, so, Maybe I'll just say Lenovo laptop DC jack replacement soldering or something. I don't know. Because it's, it's not specific to this model. Well, the rest is, so we'll leave it. I'll find the title. Alright, so I'll use the soldering iron. Usually, I got this on Amazon, but usually I'll set it like around 400, 425, around there. That's uh, Celsius, I believe. Um, Alright, so we got this. I don't know if you can even see it. Alright, so I'll do that. And to make this easier, um, the trick is you get a thing of flux. There's all different kinds of flux you can use. Um, so I've seen some people use a paste one that's probably the easiest where it's like in a syringe. But um, I'll just use this stuff where I use a little stick and I just apply it where I need it. You don't really need too much. Um, so from my understanding, what the flux does is it helps burn off um, corrosion from the or oxidation from the parts so that the solder can stick better. Um, normally, the flux that you buy, it comes with, uh, or the solder that you buy has flux built in. Um, but as you burn it, it burns off really quick. So... What I found, um, this makes this is what makes it way easier. So um, it's kind of dangerous to kind of do this over the board. So usually you want to do it off to the side, but um, so I'll do it over here. Um, but what you do um, that will make it way easier. Normally, what you do is you heat up the area and then you push the the solder um, onto the area. I don't know if you can even see what I'm doing, but normally you'll heat up the area and then push the solder onto the area. But because I put flux already on there, what you can do instead is you can put the flux on the soldering iron like this. And then when you touch the soldering, the melted solder to that, the solder will actually flow onto there. So it makes it so much easier. Oh, I didn't put enough. So let's add more. I'm probably teaching bad soldering habits, but I mean, it works a lot easier. So if you wanted the tricks that's the trick 
Oh, this one. It looks like the solder leg here is not holding. Oh, okay, it's not hot enough. There we go. I have to heat it more. There we go. So you just heat it up and it all flows in place. Okay, so that's what I found works um, a lot better is these are like cheats. You put the, the flux onto the surface. Okay, so I probably set this too high. I'm going to set it a little lower, so I'll set it to like 400 because it's oxidizing the tip of my soldering iron way too fast. Okay, so like I said, you just put a bit of solder onto the soldering iron. All right, and then you just touch it where you want the solder to go. Hold it there so that it gets hot enough to melt and flow. And there you go. Then you got a good solder joint. Okay. So that's what I found works the best. Um, and if you do still want to add more, you can do it the original way. Once you get some solder in there, it allows the heat transfer easier to where you want it. And then you can do it that way. Okay. All right. So if you're, if the area is small enough, you can do it this way. But again, see, it's like really difficult. So it's easier you add some solder to this. Again, don't do it over the board because you don't want to drip the solder onto it. And then just put touch the melted solder where you want it to go. Just like that. Now that it's heated enough, you can or now that it has some solder there to flow. Oh, this one already went, then you can do that. Alright. And you got these little pins here as well. So you can do that. All right. Heat it up. Have the solder. There we go. Okay. And usually you want some good ventilation to blow the stuff away so you don't breathe it in. Um, I don't have one. I just blow, blow at the smoke while it's going. Um, but there you go. So... Yeah, if you want, you can solder on the other side too, but they don't, um, from the factory, they don't even do that. They just solder from this one side. So, yeah. And then to clean off this extra flux, um, you just use some rubbing alcohol and, and a paper towel. Uh-oh, it's overheated, my phone. All right, so like I was saying, um, before I got cut off because my phone got too hot again, uh, new phone I don't know it gets hot too easily I might have to maybe change the setting that I record at so it's not as nice um, but we'll see all right but anyways as I was saying there's the leftover flux there and you want to clean it off you don't want to leave all that gross stuff there okay so so what you do is you get a paper or paper towel or napkin and then you just put um I have this thing that sprays uh, rubbing alcohol so I'll just use that, put some rubbing alcohol on there, and then I'll just wipe this off, okay? All right, so just wipe it with the rubbing alcohol, and you'll see all that brown stuff will disappear. Okay, you might have to use multiple times because the paper will get dirty, and then you gotta kinda fold it over, use the other side, and then wipe it up some more. All right. So you can do this with a soldering iron as well if you don't have a the hot air stations kind of quite a bit more expensive. So if you want you can do this with a soldering iron. You'll just have to slowly like heat each side and slowly lift it out since you can't heat the whole thing out at the same time. Okay, so just like that. Alright, make sure to clean off all the paper. If you want, you can use the toothbrush and then just brush it up, okay? Alright, so all the flux is wiped.